Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video we will be going through uh, this example problem here that I show on the screen. And this example problem might seem straightforward at first, however it does have some rather in-depth uh, derivations that we will um, go through throughout the remainder of this video series. So here in this first video what I'm going to do here is just read our problem statement here and then we will continue on with part one of what it is asking us to do for part one. So for our problem statement here, it says that we have natural gas uh, comprising natural gas comprising of 95 mole percent methane, 4 mole percent ethane, and 1 mole percent propane. And it says that that burns with 20% uh, excess air. Uh, so it's asking us to calculate the adiabatic flame temperature. So essentially what we have here is a combustion action reaction. So we have uh, natural gas and air combining uh, to, to form a flame here. So in part one, it is asking us to explain how the moles of each species in the feed and product. So again, our feed will be the natural gas and air and our product, obviously the flame, um, explain how this is determined from the reaction stoichiometry and given excess of air. So what I'm going to do here next for part one of this video is just go ahead and write out a visual of this example problem so that it's easier to see for when we do our derivations and set up um, to explain the moles uh, and the stoichiometry for this reaction. Uh, so that's what we're going to do next. We can go ahead and um, perform part one of this example problem. All right, so I've gone ahead and drawn out a visual here uh, for us to look at for this example problem. Uh, so to the right here, we have a picture of what's going on. So we have, again, our natural gas and our air combining uh, to produce this adiabatic flame. Now our natural gas is composed of 95% methane, 4% ethane, and 1% uh, propane. Now our air over here, uh, air is composed of 21% uh, oxygen and 79% nitrogen. Um, it's actually, uh, if we're looking at, more, at a real life scenario, it's 21% uh, oxygen, 78% nitrogen, and the 1% that's remaining is actually argon. But for simplicity's sake, we're just going to assume here that we have 21% of oxygen and 79% of nitrogen in our air that we're uh, using to combust uh, with natural gas. So uh, two important notes here that we have for this problem. Number one is uh, this flame here is adiabatic. So essentially what that means is for this reaction here with natural gas and air uh, to produce this flame, it's an adiabatic process. So that means that no heat is lost in that uh, process. Uh, also here, we are assuming that this is a, a steady state. So what that's saying is that we have no changes with time. So this reaction is occurring uh, with no um, changes in, uh, uh, no changes over time. Uh, so one thing that we can um, write out here, since we know that this is adiabatic and steady state, is that the um, enthalpy of both the uh, natural gas and air uh, combining uh, must be equal to the enthalpy of our product here, which is our flame. So we can say that our uh, HN, so natural gas and air, must equal H out. Uh, again, due to it being an adiabatic process, uh, but I'm not going to go too uh, much in depth on that. We'll actually talk about that in part two of this video series. Uh, so part one, what we want to do here is um, determine the number of moles that will go along for each of our stoichiometric uh, equations here. So uh, if we want to focus here first on this uh, methane part of our combustion reaction, uh, before we do that, a basic combustion reaction, this is, if we write it for our methane here, we'll have CH4, and then this will be, um, we will have some amount of uh, oxygen here, so O2, and this will form uh, carbon dioxide, so we'll have uh, CO2, um, and we will also form water, so we'll have uh, H2O. This is just our basic combustion reaction of natural gas uh, with air here. In this case, we're writing it for uh, the methane part of natural gas. So uh, what we want to do here is we want to go ahead and balance out this uh, equation here to get the number of moles of each substance uh, that we'll need. 
So if you look here first at our uh, hydrogens here, so over here on the left, we have four hydrogens and on the right, we have just two hydrogens. So we will need to multiply this here by two. So we'll end up with two moles of water here. So now if we look at our oxygen here, we have two, oxygen, two oxygens over here and we have uh, now four oxygens over here. So we need to multiply this uh, here by two so that the oxygens balance out. Uh, but you might be wondering here, well, number one, why did I leave this big blank space here? And two, what happened to nitrogen? Aren't we burning this um, with air, not just pure oxygen? And that's true. So what we're going to do here is if we look at our air here, if we have two moles of oxygen here, how much air, or how much nitrogen will go along uh, with these two moles of oxygen? Well, we'll have uh, two moles and the ratio of nitrogen to oxygen is 79 to 21. So we'll have to multiply this by 79 over 21, and that will give us the moles of nitrogen. And nitrogen in this combustion reaction, it's not really, um, it's not really part of the reaction. We see it here, and we also see it here. So we'll have the same amount of nitrogen uh, over here on our uh, product side. So we'll have uh, two moles, again, multiplying by the ratio of 79 over 21 and then times our uh, N2 here. So this is, uh, give, this gives us the number of moles here for our um, combustion reaction in terms of methane here. Now, if we want to write it in terms of uh, ethane, uh, we can do that too. It's the same uh, process, just balancing out the equation. So we can go ahead and do that here. So we'll have uh, C2, H6, this is um, uh, ethane here. Again, we'll have uh, plus some amount of oxygen and obviously some amount of nitrogen here, but I'll leave that blank. And this will produce uh, CO2 and uh, some amount of um, water. So uh, again, here looking at our uh, hydrogens first, we see that we have six hydrogens here and uh, just two hydrogens here. So we'll need to multiply this here to get three moles of water. So we have six hydrogens here and six hydrogens here. Um, now, uh, second, you'll look here at our carbons. Well, what we'll need to do here is multiply our carbons here by two so that we have two carbons here and two carbons here. Uh, now we can go ahead and look at our oxygens here. So here on the left, we just have two oxygens. And on the right here, we have four oxygens plus three oxygens, so we have seven oxygens. So what we need to do here is actually multiply this by seven over two. Because uh, if we multiply this by two oxygens, these two will cancel out, and we'll have uh, seven moles of oxygen over here and seven moles of oxygen over here. So we're good there. Now, if we have uh, seven over two moles of oxygen here, what will we need to... Um, Burn, or what amount of nitrogen will we need to bring along with us for this reaction? Uh, well, we'll need uh, 7 over 2, and again, multiplying by the ratio of nitrogen to oxygen, we will have uh, 71 or 79 over 21, excuse me, um, uh, moles of nitrogen. So we'll have 7 over 2, and then times the ratio, that will give us the amount of nitrogen here for this reaction. And again, nitrogen, um, it essentially just goes along for the ride in this reaction. We see it both in the reactants and the products. So we have uh, 7 over 2 times the ratio of nitrogen to oxygen, 79 over 21, uh, and 2 here. So we can go ahead and do go uh, down and do this again for our propane here. But you see the process here. I'm not going to get too in-depth on it. Uh, when we actually go into Python here, when we're doing our calculations to determine the temperature of our flame here, we'll actually be doing some, some different um, sort of crazy things with our calculations. We'll be doing um, a matrix multiplication to determine a certain amount of moles uh, for our reactions. Uh, but we'll get into that later um, in part four of this video. Now, one other thing that we need to note here, I'm not going to write it down just because we have way too many numbers here. Uh, I don't want to get too confusing here. But we have to take into account, if you remember when I read the um, problem statement, that we have 20% um, of excess air. 
Now, the reason that we have excess air here is because uh, we want a uh, complete mixture of our natural gas and our air here. We do not want to have this reaction happen and have um, too much natural gas to where we have an uh, excess amount of natural gas because then uh, we will end up getting uh, pollutants like carbon monoxide and obviously that's not something we want to accomplish uh, with a problem like this or uh, really any problem. So in order to account for that um, amount of 20% of XX air, what we'll need to do here is multiply our oxygen um, by uh, 120% or 1.2. And doing that, this will affect um, the rest of our stoichiometric equation here. So when we do our calculations, we will um, take this into account. So we'll multiply this by um, 1.2 or 120% because we have 20% excess air. This will affect the number of moles of the rest of our equation. We will see that. And we will also have an amount of oxygen that remains here on our product because if we have um, excess oxygen here uh, burning, we're also going to have it um, up here in our products and the flame here because we're not going to completely use up all of that oxygen. Um, but like I said, um, this, that's very important to remember here that we have, so I, I can write that down here. So 20% uh, uh, excess air, okay? So again, this will affect the entire stoichiometric equation. I'm not going to write it down right now just because we've got a lot of numbers going on here, but that is important to remember and we will run into that scenario when we're actually doing our calculations in part uh, three and four of this video to determine the temperature of the flame here. Um, but this is the basics uh, to give us a good groundwork to move forward with um, our derivations that we'll do in part two and three of this video. Uh, but yeah, this will give us um, the, stoichiom the stoichiometry um, for our stoichiometric equations here for the number of moles of everything. So that's it for part one. Now we can go ahead into part two of this video.